Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thank you very much for tuning in. So it's been a little while since I've done one of these in-studio videos, and to be totally honest with you, I have just been incredibly busy the last couple weeks. Uh, it first started with going for my uh, drone part 107 uh, certification, which I did get my license uh, for work, which was pretty cool because obviously I, I do drone stuff for the channel too. So helps me out here, uh, and I get to fly drones at work now, which is pretty awesome. So. That is one of the things that I was doing. So that's pretty cool, uh, that, but that did take up some free time as far as studying for that test. And I might do another video on that just in and of itself, but I'm not too sure yet. Uh, the other thing taking up a ton of my time right now is I am getting into repainting my car yet again on this channel. I did it last year. I'm doing it again, but this time legit. I went out and bought a 60 gallon compressor, all of the appropriate stuff to paint the car uh, the right way. If you didn't see that video, you can see the unboxing. I'll link it up above. Uh, but uh, part of that is just, it's been a lot of work. So I got into tearing the car apart last weekend, uh, basically took all the lights off, tore it all down the way you're supposed to, and I've uh, been chipping away at it after work, uh, get home and just a couple hours here, a couple hours there. And that is also why I am baby faced right now. Uh, the respirators, which by the way, these are a pretty hot commodity right now. Uh, I went out and had a really hard time finding respirators. And then when I did find them like a total jerk, I panicked and bought three boxes that were on the shelf because I, to be honest with you, I didn't really know how many I was gonna need for this car painting project and I couldn't find any of the actual respirator cartridges. So, uh, but again, that is why I went baby face because you need to do that in order to uh, get a seal on your face. So I was actually able to find these cartridges, well actually an entire mask at Lowe's this past weekend. So. Since I have those, and I also have some N95s for this, I actually don't need the paper masks, and I think I'm gonna take them to the hospital and uh, and donate those, because I know people are, are, are really hurting for them with the coronavirus right now. So uh, I'm gonna take those masks and uh, ship those off to the hospital and, and see if they'll take them, because I don't need them. Uh, so I'm looking forward to growing the beard back. I'm gonna have to shave this one more time before I actually spray color this weekend. Uh, but uh, the beard will be coming back because I don't like this. So uh, with that being said, I also wanted to talk about uh, the, the CEO of Harley Davidson stepped down. Uh, this was on February 28th. Basically there was an announcement that Harley Davidson, uh, the CEO, Matt Levitich was gonna step down. Now Levitich has been the CEO with Harley for a while. And he's been uh, kind of in the whole marshalling in the new soft tail line, uh, the Milwaukee 8. He's been a, a part of, of all of that. But he's also been a huge part of Harley sales tanking since 2008. Not saying he's responsible for that, but uh, at the end of the day, obviously, the responsibility leads and falls with the, the head of the company. So Levitich stepped down until the article I saw today which uh, there's some pretty interesting things going on with Harley Davidson right now. There is this Impala Asset Management, which is a, uh, a large shareholder. Uh, I don't really understand the whole inner workings of it, and I'm not here to pretend as if I do, but they are saying as of today that Matt Levitich was actually fired and or terminated, is what they're saying, in a press release, and this... Impala Asset Management is making some pretty bold moves to uh, try to insert two members on the board, which is, is pretty wild. Uh, at this point, I think it's necessary. I hate to say it to the guys at Harley-Davidson. And I, I go back to a video that Shade Tree Surgeon put out. By the way, all this stuff that you're talking shit about constantly, there's, there's actual people behind it. You know, you can say all these things about how they're not doing their jobs or whatever, but I mean no ill will to any of these these people at all. I mean they're 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 people with families that uh, I'm assuming these people all work very hard. It's it just the problem is the company's not doing well, and everybody likes to play the blame game and you know say well it's younger people not buying bikes and whatever the case may be. The current situation just isn't working. So I'm super happy at this point that this Impala Asset Management is working very hard to place two new people on the board in an effort to maybe right the ship. And there's a lot of things I've been saying for a while that I think Harley needs to start doing differently. And uh, one of those things is embracing the content creators on social media that have worked and, and diligently built audiences around this brand that really don't get any acknowledgement from Harley Davidson. And I think 
that if Harley gets some some people that think different, we'll go Apple with this, that are willing to maybe leverage some of the success that independent creators have have worked so hard to build, that maybe they could actually turn around and translate that into some motorcycle sales. I mean, even for what it's worth, having some some YouTubers or Instagram uh, people, whatever you want to call it, uh, get out there and every year be invited to come out and ride the new Harleys and build a whole event around the social media influencers that that have so much of this content out there. We're really relegated to either finding a, a local dealer that will work with us or just taking bikes out on demo days. And uh, I don't think Harley's doing a great job of actually leveraging the people creating the content around their brand uh, that really strike and speak to an audience uh, that Harley just doesn't have or they're not converting into sales. So uh, there's some things I really hope Harley's going to do differently in the near future, and I really, really hope that this Impala Asset Management uh, can do it. Now, I'm going to link in the description down below. This Eric Schilling from Jalopnik has done an incredible job covering Harley-Davidson from a respectable point of view, in my opinion, and uh, this article he put out yesterday, Harley Davidson CEO was actually fired. I will link that down below. I suggest you read it. It is very fascinating. And then there is another one here. Harley Davidson isn't interested in changing, which was put out on Monday. And uh, he's basically going through some of the same things uh, with this change of, of the uh, guard here at Harley Davidson with uh, Matt Levitich stepping down and this... Uh, Jochen Zeitz uh, stepping in as the CEO, who apparently was like the CEO of Puma at some point. So, um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Looking at the board of directors currently and the CEO, there is a lot of talent, but there's really not a lot of motorcycle industry experience, I'd say. So, in my opinion, I think they just need to get some people that are are genuine motorcycle people, uh, not just impressive people. Uh, Resumes, basically, which is what the board is built up at, with currently. So, um, these two articles from Jalopnik are very, very good reads. I highly suggest you check them out. Again, I needed to get on here and, and cut a video because it's been a while since I just sat in here, a talking head video, and uh, shared some things with you. Uh, so, I also apparently today got famous on TikTok. I had a, a viral video. It's like 80,000 80, views or something, which is absolute insanity. Let's see. 79,000, 79, almost 80,000 views on uh, a video from uh, me just prepping my car this week. So I don't know how you leverage that into anything, to be totally honest with you, but uh, whatever, pretty cool. So if you guys want to check me out on TikTok, I guess I'll link that here too. I don't have a whole lot of ambition to uh, blow up huge on TikTok, but... Uh, really, my, my business obviously is, is here on YouTube, and I, I absolutely love YouTube. So, uh, uh, guys, I really appreciate you sticking with me. Sorry for the delay on content. It's really been uh, just super hectic lately. So I just wanted to jump on, cut a quick video, uh, say hello to all my subscribers because it's been a minute. And uh, with all that being said, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Thank you for sticking with me. I love this YouTube channel. I love my subscribers. It's really incredible. Stay safe with the coronavirus out there. If you can, shelter in place. Uh, just you know, try try to socially distance as much as you possibly can. And uh, you know, it, even if you're not fearing for yourself, just be responsible for uh, others out there and realize that uh, you know you don't want to kill somebody's grandfather or grandmother. Uh, I know I certainly uh, do not want to. So, uh, anyways, guys, thanks again for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. And I will see you guys after I'm done uh, painting this car and with that project. I'm very excited for that to be done, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.